part B on genetic inheritance and genetic control. We are going to discuss on the structured question. Question number one A. Figure six shows results obtained in the Masselson and Stott experiment, which support the semi conservative model of DNA replication. Okay, so the two scientists basically did an experiment to prove that DNA replication occurs according to semi-conservative model by growing bacteria, uh, which is E. coli, in a medium that contains um, um, nitrogen isotope. So, ada dua nitrogen isotope, 15 and uh, 14 lah kat sini kan. So, 15 is the heavier nitrogen uh, is uh, is the heavier isotope for nitrogen, nitrogen 15 ok, so untuk fahamkan eksperimen ni first, yang first kali uh, the bacteria uh, was grown in a medium that contains heavy isotope, nitrogen 14 and the bacteria was grown for 14 generations ok, sebab apa? untuk memastikan all the bacteria incorporated all the DNA of the bacteria incorporated nitrogen 15 ok so kita kat sini kan in the diagram it shows you uh, the, uh, the 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 test tube that contains two different DNA ok so if you can see here the DNA of the bacteria after has been grown for 14 generation so the DNA of the bacteria was extracted and then centrifuge at, at, at high speed. So the, the purpose is to separate the molecule according to their mass. Okay, so if the molecule is of um, uh, is is heavy, okay, so uh, it will be at the bottom uh, of the tube. Okay, so which is this one, nitrogen 15. So the upper. DNA of the bacteria sekarang ni kan kita consider dia sebagai parental parental DNA okay so the parental DNA saya indicate kan dia sebagai warna merah consists of nitrogen 15 so nitrogen 15 for the two strand Okay, nitrogen 15. Okay, so bila kita centrifuge dia, so dia ada pada dekat bawah test tube tu. Okay, so another control is uh, the one that consists of nitrogen 14 yang original lah. Okay, so dia, uh, dia bacteria tu, uh, the bacterial DNA was then extracted and then centrifuge and produce DNA band yang ada pada bahagian atas test tube tu sebab dia uh, berat dia ringan ok ha so it, it, the mass of the DNA is lighter ok so this we consider as um, heavy heavy and uh, heavy uh, heavy heavy band heavy DNA band and the yang ini kita consider dia sebagai lighter band ok ok so the bacteria that was grown in nitrogen 15 we consider it as parental DNA sebab kita nak make sure all the DNA has incorporated nitrogen 15 so kita control uh, untuk kita compare lah kan untuk kita compare kan dia ok so uh, for this one we consider uh, in the control we can consider this as zero gender Generation, zero generation. Okay, so after zero generation, the bacteria was then transferred into the second medium that contains nitrogen 14. Okay, nitrogen 14. So transfer kan, daripada 15 pergi ke 14. So uh, to get one round of complete DNA replication, uh, it takes about 20 minutes. Okay, for the bacteria to replicate. Okay, so after 20 minutes, the DNA of the bacteria was then extracted and then the centrifuge. So after centrifuge, it was found that um, uh, this is the first generation lah kan? Okay. Generation. So uh, after, uh, after the DNA has been centrifuged for the first generation, so result dia dia dapat DNA band of intermediate uh, 
weight. Okay, so this one we called it, we can consider this as intermediate band. Okay, intermediate band. Okay, so why? Because uh, in order to produce uh, the DNA for the first generation, so the bacteria uses the parental DNA to produce the new daughter DNA in the first generation. So the parental DNA will become the template to synthesize the, uh, the daughter DNA in the first generation. So template I can separate. Okay, so because the DNA, because the bacteria is grown in nitrogen 14, so in order to synthesize the complementary DNA strand, so it uses DNA that has incorporated nitrogen 14. Okay, yang hijau tu nitrogen DNA yang ada nitrogen 14. So, in the first generation, it means that 100% of the bacterial DNA consists of both nitrogen 15, yang daripada template parent, okay, that juga nitrogen 14. Okay, that is in the first generation. So, that's why band yang dihasilkan tu of intermediate band. Okay, so in the third generation, okay, in the third generation, uh, the third generation, sorry, the second generation, eh, second generation, is obtained from the first generation. So, uh, waited for another 20 minutes again okay, to get the DNA for the second generation. So, the DNA is then undergo the same procedure, extracted and then centrifuge. Okay, so in order to get the DNA for the second generation, uses the template from the first generation. So, the template, okay, kita boleh anggap dia sebagai uh, separate lah, kan? Separate. Okay, first, second lah. First, separated. Okay, hijau yang bawah, use as also template. Okay, so yang untuk yang second, also separate to become template. So, in order to synthesize the complementary DNA strand, uses DNA that has uh, incorporated nitrogen 14 as well. Okay, sebab dia dalam nitrogen 14 sekarang ni kan. So, the, the new daughter DNA strand consists of both old and new strand. Old and new strand. Okay, so now you produce two sets of new daughter DNA molecule. So, in the second generation, therefore, 50% okay, of the DNA consists of, okay, 50% consists of nitrogen 15, nitrogen 14, and another 50% consists of nitrogen 14 and also nitrogen 14. So that's why when you look at the diagram, it produces two band, okay, one of intermediate band and the other one of lighter band. Intermediate band, okay, yang ini lah, um, yang ini, okay, half. 50% nitrogen 15 14 and another 50% lighter lighter band okay lighter band of nitrogen 14 and 14 so the question asks you for three marks okay describe the band produced in the second generation so yang aku kena explain yang ni lah kan in the second generation you produce two band okay which is the first point uh, you have the uh, the the intermediate band band Okay, one intermediate band. Okay, that consists of nitrogen 15 and also nitrogen 14. Okay, and then point itu point yang pertama. Point yang kedua adalah you describe the upper band here. So the upper band is uh, uh, the upper band. Okay is uh, consists of nitrogen 14 atau nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 14 or you can also refer the upper band as the light band okay so for the third point uh, you can describe as uh, the new daughter dna uh, molecule produced it consists of one okay one parent one parental strand 
or one old strand and one newly synthesized strand. Okay, newly synthesized strand. So, tiga markah lah kat situ. Okay, question B. Below is the DNA sequence which codes for a short protein. Given in the question is the DNA sequence. Okay, in the bold is the DNA sequence. So, in order for you to answer question 1 which, say, which says, draw a circle around the triplet bases in the DNA sequence above that specify a start codon and a box around the bases that specify a stop codon. Okay, so in order for you to answer this question, first you must know what is the start codon. What is the sequence for start codon? So sequence for start codon, you have uh, you have to memorize, which is the the codon is referring to actually the mRNA codon. So the mRNA start codon, okay, we read as AUG. Okay, AUG is the mRNA codon for start start of process translation, okay, to produce protein. Okay, so as for the stop codon, so stop codon here is referring to mRNA stop codon. So you have to know the mRNA stop codon will read, there are three, three uh, stop codon which is A, UAA, UAG and also UGA. So these three stop codon you have to remember, the start codon you, host, you also have to remember. Okay, so given in the question is the DNA codons, okay, is the DNA sequence. So in order for you to get the mRNA codon, you have to find the complementary mRNA sequence according to the DNA sequence. So you just have to uh, get the complementary mRNA sequence. Okay, just just uh, write the sequence. Uh, you have to find the complement, uh, the complement base pairing. So, for example, if you have five in the DNA, so on the mRNA you have three. Okay, so three prime uh, A with U, G with C, C with G, C with G, and up to the uh, the end of the uh, of the uh, mRNA strand. Okay, until you produce a complete mRNA strand. Okay, so uh, once you have uh, uh, you have the mRNA sequence, so by look by analyzing at the mRNA sequence, you have to find the codon, the start codon AUG. So in the sequence AUG is here. Okay, AUG. Okay, so the DNA sequence will be here TAC. So just circle TAC here which um, will uh, produce the start codon on the mRNA. So, circle. So, you have to circle TAC. For the uh, for the second question, okay, the the, uh, the sequence on DNA that, that will produce the stop codon, you have to draw a box, okay, which is uh, in the mRNA, you, to, you have to find either of these, these three uh, stop codon. So, uh, if you can find, here is U, GA. Okay, UGA is the stop codon on mRNA. So you just draw a box. Okay, draw a box on the DNA which is at ACT here. Okay, ACT, you, you have to draw a box. Okay, so for this question, what you must do first is to write the complementary mRNA sequence based on the DNA template given. Okay, so for the second question, it says here, if a mutation occurs and the underlying C cytosine here, the underlying C, okay, in the DNA sequence above is replaced or substituted by thymine. So in this case, substitution occurs. Okay, so explain how this may affect the protein produced. So for this question, it is worth two marks. Okay, so for the first mark, if you describe the mutation is substitution. Okay, so initial, initially the, the in the DNA sequence, it is C, but it is then replaced with T, thymine. So the, the type of mutation is substitution. Okay, so when you replace C with T, substitution can lead to two possible uh, mutation, two possible type of mutation. So it can lead to either missense mutation or the other type of mutation is silent mutation 
Okay, so either of these two, you can get another one mark. Okay, uh, so uh, the point that you must have in your answer is you have to explain what happened to the pro uh, to the protein produced. Okay, what happened to the protein produced if mutation involved is missense mutation? So the protein produced uh, will be changed. Okay, it can it may change uh, uh, to a different protein. Okay, because uh, when you change cytosine to thymine, the uh, you you may change the code to a different uh, the the codon to a different amino acid. Okay, so initial initially uh, when uh, when the codon reads for example C C A, so if you change uh, to thymine, so this can lead to uh, a different amino acid being coded. Okay, so that is mis missense mutation. Code for a different amino acid and can lead to a different protein produced. If the mutation involved is silent mutation, okay, so this will affect, uh, this will uh, produce the same protein as of, uh, when it involves silent mutation. Uh, it's still code for the same amino acid. Okay, silent mutation occurs and still code for the same amino acid. So therefore, the protein produced will be the same. Okay, no no effect. Okay. So uh, that is for two marks. Okay, so first mark you identify the type of mutation. Either you write substitution or missense mutation or silent mutation. Then you have to uh, explain what happened to the protein produce for the second mark okay so for the third question it says here deletion may happen in point mutation or chromosomal mutation <coughs> okay so <coughs> point mutation involve you change the dna sequence okay from for for example uh, from adenine to thymine from uh, adenine to guanine for example that is point mutation so point mutation can involve substitution for example or deletion for example or insertion for example you change the dna sequence <coughs> for the chromosomal mutation it happened at large scale where, for example uh, uh, the segment of the chromosome can be deleted okay so in this case we are focusing on deletion Alright, so explain one difference and one similarity between these two types of mutation. Okay, so two marks. So one mark you have to give the difference between point mutation and chromosomal mutation. So for, for uh, point mutation, if deletion occurs, okay, for more point mutation, it involves, okay, a best pair being removed from the sequence or a best pair being deleted from the DNA sequence, okay? That is deletion. And then uh, for chromosomal mutation, it uh, if deletion occurs, it involves loss of a, uh, of a segment of a chromosome, okay, segment. So for example, here you have um, uh, a pair of homologous chromosome, it says here a pair. So a segment may be deleted, okay? So you delete this segment here. Uh, so that is chromosomal mutation. So it involves large amount of the DNA be, uh, uh, of the DNA in the chromosome being deleted. So chromosomal mutation, the effects is much more the uh, the effect is much more detrimental compared to point mutation. Okay. So um, for the second mark, you have to give the similarity between these two uh, these two uh, mutation, which is for the similarity, both point mutation and chromosomal mutation will affect the DNA sequence and therefore uh, will also affect the mRNA sequence. Okay, huh? so that is for the second mark. Question two. A. Figure 7 shows replication of leading and lagging strands of DNA. So in figure 7, you can see how DNA replication occurs. So the top strand here is the synthesis of leading strands. Okay. So leading strand is synthesized from origin of replication towards replication fork. So here is replication fork. So for the second type, uh, type of uh, uh, DNA strand synthesized is lagging strand. So lagging strand are synthesized 
as Okazaki fragments. So uh, the Okazaki fragments are synthesized from origin of replication okay, towards Sorry, uh, it is synthesized from replication fork towards origin of replication. Here you have the origin of replication. But, okay, uh, you have to take note that uh, the, uh, the, the first Okazaki fragment that will be synthesized is the one that is nearest to the, uh, to the origin of replication. So, if you look at the figure, okay, you have three fragments. So, fragment C will be the first Okazaki fragment synthesized, fragment B will be the second Okazaki fragment synthesized, and fragment A will be the third Okazaki fragment synthesized. So as replication proceeds and the, uh, and the replication bubble, so this is the region we call it as replication bubble, so as, as DNA replication proceeds and replication bubble gets bigger and bigger, so the 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 synthesis of Okazaki fragment will continues. Okay, will continues, and the most recent Okazaki fragment synthesized will be the one that is nearest to the replication fork. Okay, replication fork. The f uh, the first Okazaki fragment will be the one that is the nearest to the origin of replication. So for question number one. Okay, so which is the first Okazaki fragment synthesized? It will be fragment C. Okay, the one that is the most nearest to the origin of replication. Okay, number two. Name two enzymes and describe their function in the synthesis of lagging strands in the table below. Okay, so lagging strands are synthesized uh, uh, using the same enzyme as uh, the synthesis of leading strand actually okay so the enzyme involved are uh, the first one you can list down which is primase okay primase which is to synthesize the RNA, uh, RNA primer okay to synthesize the RNA primer and then after the RNA primer has been synthesized okay to create the uh, five and three prime ends okay that when you have the three prime ends uh, of the RNA primer then the next enzyme will be DNA polymerase 3 okay so as you can see from the name DNA polymerase 3 the function of the, this enzyme is to uh, elongate uh, the DNA strand by adding DNA nucleotide to the three prime end of the primer or to the three prime end of the elongating uh, strand okay and because uh, in the question it asks you for the synthesis of lagging strand so during the addition of DNA uh, nucleotides okay um, to the growing uh, DNA strand the the elongation of the DNA strand uh, for the lagging strand will start from the replication fork towards origin of replication Okay, so after the Okazaki fragment of the lagging strand has been synthesized, the next enzyme is DNA polymerase 1. Okay, the function of DNA polymerase 1 is to degrade the RNA primer produced. So, primase produce RNA primer, right? So, you do not want RNA nucleotide in the DNA. So, that is the function of DNA polymerase 1 is to degrade. Okay degrade RNA primer okay and uh, replace with DNA nucleotides okay and then uh, the next enzyme will be after you have synthesized the, the, the fragment as Okazaki fragment you want to produce a continuous lagging strand so you have to join the Okazaki fragments together using DNA ligase Okay, so these are the four enzymes required during the synthesis of lagging strands. So you just, in the question, uh, the question only asks for two. So you can pick any two enzymes and describe the function like the one that I've just explained. Question B, sickle cell anemia is an inherited form of anemia where the shape of red blood cells is abnormal and this affects the oxygen transport throughout the body. 
Figure 8 shows the nucleotide sequence for normal hemoglobin and abnormal hemoglobin. Okay, so in the figure, in figure 8, it gives you the DNA sequence. Okay, the DNA sequence for the synthesis of normal hemoglobin and also the synthesis of abnormal hemoglobin. If you look at this uh, DNA sequence, it starts with 5 primes and end with a 3 prime. Okay, 5 prime and end with a 3 prime. When, the, uh, when in the question, it gives you the DNA sequence that starts with 5 and ends with a 3, then you should straight away know that this is the uh, DNA sequence of, uh, of non-template. Non non-template DNA strand okay so uh, another term for non-template DNA strand we call it as the coding coding sequence okay so this coding sequence is the same as the mRNA sequence okay because mRNA sequence mRNA strand the synthesis of mRNA strand it starts with 5 prime and ends with the 3 prime. So if you look at the uh, the, the in the figure, it, uh, the strand starts with 5 and ends with the 3. So the DNA sequence uh, given is the same as the mRNA sequ sequence except where, where you have T, you have to replace with U. Okay, where you have T, you, you have to replace with U because this is the mRNA sequence that you have to um, determine okay in order for you to determine the amino acid sequence as uh, the question stated for question number one okay so if you look at the question for question one here it says by looking but sorry by using the genetic code provided in figure nine so figure nine is actually mRNA codon table okay mRNA codon table so, uh, in order for you to write down the amino acid sequence for both the normal and abnormal uh, hemoglobin, you have to know the mRNA sequence in order for you to determine the codon that code for the specific amino acids. Okay. So, if you look at the first uh, strand for the normal hemoglobin, okay. So, if you replace uh, the the sequence with with uh, T with U, okay, then you have to find the corresponding um, amino acid in the table. Okay, so for the first codon, sorry, for the first uh, mRNA sequence, okay, for the normal hemoglobin, it will read something like, okay, 5 prime, ACU, CCU, uh, GAG, GAG, 3 prime. Okay, so this is the first mRNA sequence. So the corresponding codon uh, to code for specific amino acids, you have to refer to the figure. Okay, so the first codon, it reads AU, sorry, ACU. So A, C, U. A, the first uh, base, C for the second base, U for the third base. So it is threonine. Okay, threonine, THR. For the second codon, is CCU, C C U, okay C, sorry C C U. It is proline, okay. And then for the third, G A G, G A G, which is G L U, okay. And then for the last amino acid sequence, G A G, G A G is the same one, okay? GLU juga, okay? So, this is the amino acid sequence for the normal hemoglobin. For the abnormal hemoglobin, okay, the corresponding mRNA sequence should read 5 prime ACU, CCU, GUG, GA, G3 prime, okay? So, you have to separate the mRNA into three bases into codons and then you have to just refer to the uh, sequence which is ACU which is the same one as the top uh, uh, sequence which is threonine, CCU, 
still proline g u g okay g u g okay the so from from uh, g l u it uh, it changes to g u g which is valine okay and then g a g still g uh, GLU. Okay, so this is the amino acid sequence for the abnormal hemoglobin. So if you uh, look at the outcome of the uh, amino acid sequence produced for normal and abnormal, it changes uh, basically the mutation that uh, happens is it changes this one base from adenine to uracil. And this will change the, the amino acid coded, which is from GLU to VAL, valine. Okay, so this is what we call it as um, um, missense mutation. Okay, when the codon changes uh, code for a different amino acid. Okay, so this, uh, when you have the complete uh, sequence of amino acid for each one, it is worth one mark each. Okay. Question 2. Describe how this mutation results in sickle shape of the red blood cells. Okay, so given in the question, uh, you have the uh, normal DNA sequence and the abnormal DNA sequence. So if you analyze the DNA sequence given in the question, you will uh, see that um, uh, the, uh, the base that has changed for, from normal to abnormal is it changes the, the base adenine to thymine. Okay, adenine to thymine. So this is what we call it as point mutation. The question asks you to describe. So you have to describe uh, how how does the mutation occurs and results in the in the disease, in the shape of the red blood cells being sickle shaped. Okay. So for three marks, okay. So the type of mutation involved is point mutation, or for the same point, you you describe or you explain that it involves adenine changes to thymine, or for the same point, it involves a base substitution. Okay, adenine changes to thymine. Okay, so as the results of the uh, base being changed, okay, to uh, from adenine to thymine, this results uh, in the amino acids sequence being changed which is uh, for for the codon GAG initially it code for the amino acid valine when it changes to GUG in the mRNA it code for the amino acid glutamic acid okay so when the codon code for a different amino acid we call this as missense mutation okay missense mutation so for three marks if you explain all these three points, you get the full mark, okay? Uh, or you could also describe the business mutation as it involves um, coding for a different amino acids, okay? So when a different amino acid is being coded in the in the in the uh, in the amino acid sequence of the protein, so this will lead to the protein being changed, or it causes the red blood cells to lose its functional role okay so you you can uh, write either of this uh, point either of this uh, this point to get uh, to get the, the full mark which is three